little bit longer uh, before uh, the actual vetting uh, begins. Once again, in studio, I did promise you earlier that we have our guest with us, and his name is Joe Kenneth Kounder, who is a governance expert, he also understands matters of devolution. Good morning, Thank sir. You. Welcome to the show. Thank you so Kenneth much. Kenneth Kounder, I, th I think you are some sort of a Pan Africanist. Of course, <laughs> I'm a Pan Africanist from the name itself. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show. Now, basically, now we're, we're talking about devolution. Of course, March this year marks five years since the onset of devolution in the, Ken in, in, in the country, of course, in Kenya. Yeah. So, the, those who, uh, you know, they're basically saying that. Uh, Devolution is the best gift to, to Kenya since independence, that is in 1963. Um, I tend to agree mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, usually when you have certain uh, challenges, then you come up with solutions. And we came up with the solutions based on the challenges we had uh, post and pre-independence. Mm -hmm. And I think that devolution definitely is one of the pinnacles of the 2010 constitution mm -hmm. and one of the best steps, as you say, that we made. But we have had so many challenges to it that, uh, according to me, we haven't actually seen the results of the devolution as mm -hmm. we wanted to, as was foreseen, as was envisioned by those who actually campaigned for devolution. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, discuss the different challenges that I feel mm -hmm. uh, have uh, bedeviled this, mm -hmm. this, this wonderful step that we had. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I think still we have to agree that this was a wonderful step mm -hmm. and we can't go back. We can only move forward. Yes. Now, uh, of course, one of the issues that have been there, uh, has been there since the onset of devolution is the some sort of a, we've witnessed some sort of a supremacy battle between the national government and the county government, and after that we've seen delays in you know releasing of funds from yeah. the treasury to the to the uh, county government. Do you think these are some of the challenges that need to be resolved in order to realize some sort of a tangible development in the country? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I believe that devolution is still a very young concept mm -hmm. in our country, and it requires a lot of guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was concentrated at the central government before, and therefore this central government has to guide devolution fully and all the time. Mm -hmm. at, this at this stage, the, the, the county governments require the central government fully. And uh, one of the things that we haven't achieved is that proper coordination and uh, between the national government and the county governments. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that one of the biggest challenges is not actually money, mm -hmm. as we say. Because this money, you have to have money and know how to use it. It has been the structures of how this money should be spent. Mm -hmm. And I think that accountability has been the biggest issue. Because when these things were devolved, did we also devolve the accountability measures? There have not been structures in which to hold these county governments accountable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the national government had the mandates to guide the county governments on how to spend this money. Hmm. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges we face is accountability. And this coordination is important because the constitution says very clearly and it spells out the stages of, uh, of, of, of coordination between the national government and the county government. Hmm. But this hasn't been achieved so far. Because there's also been a, a, a tug of war between the national government mm -hmm. and the county government when it comes to certain issues like money, as you say, which I don't believe should be a big issue, mm -hmm. as, a, as, as, as my, per my opinion, because they get the money at some point. And they have received money. Mm -hmm. But you have also seen the reports. How are they spending the money? And therefore, sometimes when the national government is a bit reluctant mm -hmm. in releasing the, the funds, I agree with them to some level, mm -hmm. because they have to have structures in place before this money is just released. Mm -hmm. When the devolution concept came into force, the money was released without any proper structures in place. That's according to my opinion. Yes. And uh, apart from the rift between the national government, you know, the differences between uh, the national government and the county, uh, county government, yeah. there's also been issues to do with the county assembly. Yeah. These are people who are supposed to offer some sort of an oversight role. But it seems like they've perfected the art of blackmailing governors. I mean, you know, threatening them in one way or another. Yeah, do you yeah. think that, that is something that can be avoided as well? It can be avoided. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think another thing that, uh, apart from now, the, 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 the friction between the national government and the county government, there was no proper education, which is capacity building, on these leaders. You, 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 you know very clearly that the MCS are people who are not... Most of them are not people who understood properly this structure. They knew that these positions came up, people could vie for them, and they could be paid salaries. But who understood clearly how this structure was going to work? If you go to an MCA in mm -hmm. your area right now mm -hmm. and speak to them about devolution and what their mandate actually is in accomplishing this, this task, will they tell you? When there was devolution, these services were supposed to move closer to the people. Mm -hmm. Participation of people in governance was supposed to be closer. That's why we have MCS. 
because we could just have MPs. Mm -hmm. We have the constituencies. And, but MPs were, were most of the time were inaccessible because of the, you know, the size, the geographical size of the, of the constituencies. Yes. But the MCS was supposed to bring the power closer to, P, mm -hmm. to people. But there was no proper education, both for the MCS and for the people, on what their roles are, mm -hmm. responsibilities and duties. And therefore, MCS went for this position just like MPs. And then now you find an MCA who is uh, supposed to be living in the rural area, mm -hmm. moving to uh, the closest city. Mm -hmm. You understand? And therefore, then it means that what was supposed to be achieved, which is participation and closeness and, dev and devolving of power, mm -hmm. didn't happen at all. Yes. These people are still inaccessible as much mm -hmm. as possible. So you're saying there's some need of, you know, some sort of a sensitization. There's a proper out, out need there. for sensitization, mm -hmm. yes. Now, uh, let's talk about, of course, the observers are saying that it's a bit uh, premature to criticize this county government because they've been in office barely for five years. Actually, mm -hmm. they're going to complete the fifth year in March uh, this year. So do you think, how, how do you see the future of, of devolution in this country? The future of devolution is bright, mm -hmm. I have to be honest. Uh, but it depends on a number of things. It depends on how we are going to address the challenges. You know, life has challenges, mm -hmm. and there's no perfect uh, governance structure. But I think what matters most is how do you address those challenges? We've had our challenges, mm -hmm. and this is something new to us. But how are we going to address these challenges? That's one. And that's the only way we're going to go forward. And one thing I mentioned is capacity building, even for the governors. Mm -hmm. Do they understand properly how this is supposed to work? Because if you read the Constitution, it spells very well what is devolved and what is not. But at some point, you realize that, for example, health and education mm -hmm. are devolved and partly not devolved. But do people understand this? Mm -hmm. Do the governors and the MCS and the people uh, who are supposed to, the, the, all the stakeholders, understand this Don't concept? you think that is, that is the part of the problem, that you know the national government seems to get hold of some of the devolved uh, functions instead I of think giving that's part the county government yes. you know, authority? It is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to look at it from both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. Because it could be part of the problem. But the, gov the national government could also be looking at it from the fact that within five years, we you devolve everything to an, uh, a county government that has never done anything before? Mm -hmm. Because that would mean you adding them revenue. You're giving them more powers, mm -hmm. which I don't think, in my opinion, is the right time. We, we need a longer time, which is another very important point. We need a longer time mm -hmm. for the devolution of these things. But the national government has to put in place structures that these things are being devolved. Mm -hmm. Not that they should hold back, no. Yes. Now, uh, Joe, do you foresee a situation where in five or ten years uh, to come, where these county governments are not going to rely uh, you know, totally on this money from uh, the national government, but come up with their own source of, of, of revenue and, you know, survive based on their own cash? I think five or ten years, no. Mm -hmm. I have to be very honest. It uh, has to take longer. It, it has to take longer. Mm -hmm. It will take more, more than 20 so years. So how can counties achieve or get to that kind of a situation? I think the only way is, one, we mentioned, you just mentioned one thing. Mm -hmm. They have to be devolved. Everything has to be devolved. If you decide to devolve health, for example, or mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. fully devolve the education sector, and therefore guide them on those steps. But I do not say that you devolve it immediately. There are steps of devolution because, for example, uh, education policies with, within the national government, but primary education, you realize certain issues are within the county government. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe there is need to devolve these things with time. And then at the end of it, we, mu we must have a timeline yes. and a target. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, we realize that the whole education sector is now devolved to the government. Mm -hmm. And how do they run it? And then with that, we start opening ways of getting revenue for the county government mm -hmm. and adding them more money. Because right now they get 15% of the, you know, the national revenue. Mm -hmm. We can add them more money because money comes to the national Actually, revenue. that is something the opposition has been propagating a lot. I mean, why is it so <laughs> difficult, especially for the government to increase these funds for the county government? No, but uh, again, that I disagree. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I, I'm talking about again is time. Yes. We can't just get to devolution and what we are asking for is more money. Mm -hmm. It's just been five years. Mm -hmm. We're completing five years in March. We can't be asking for more revenue mm -hmm. if actually what you've, you've been given now you mm -hmm. hasn't been used. If I give you money now, then you have to prove that you can use it wisely mm -hmm. for me to give you more. Mm -hmm. I do not think it's the right time. It is still premature mm -hmm. to ask for more money. Something else that people are saying is a bit premature mm -hmm. is uh, when health was devolved. You've seen the tussle there between county government and you know, doctors and nurses. Actually, at some point, doctors went yeah. on strike for about 100 days. Do you think health is something that could have at least been mm -hmm. under the watch of the national government? Yeah, I think there are certain very critical issues. When, we, when we're nurturing something very new and very young, mm -hmm. there are very critical issues that we need to hold back a bit. Mm -hmm. Because we've been here now 50-something years, over 50 years, and the national government has been in control. Mm -hmm. I think this is, the, this is something that had to be held back mm -hmm. for some time. Yes. 
not to the county government because they were not running as smoothly. And you've seen what has happened with teachers mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and nurses in the last five years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been the worst compared to, you know, 